I found the most incredible thing growing in the new garden and I didn't plant it at all. I have a ring of parasol mushrooms. There are probably about a dozen now and these are an edible mushroom that are fairly easy to identify and they will probably come up every year. The flavor isn't the best from wild mushrooms though, which got me to thinking that maybe I should go and have a look for my favorite. are not in the garden today, but instead out in a plantation, so a forested area here on the Isle of Man, and we are going to be looking for porcini mushrooms. Now, I am not an expert mushroom forager. I don't know very many edible mushrooms, but I do know the porcini, and it is called the king of mushrooms for good reason, because the flavor is just incredible. They're also very expensive to find in the shop, and so this time of the year, if I remember and I have time, I like to come out to this area and have a little look around. And so today I'm taking you with me and we are on the hunt for the porcini mushroom. And it's also called the sep, it's called the penny bun, and in German it's called the steinpilz. You know, even if I don't find anything, it's just so nice being out here. And I don't think that there's going to be anyone on this path other than me. We'll see because there are a few savvy people on the island now who know that Porcini pops up in these areas and might be ahead of me. But I would say that British people, American people, a lot of different cultures are a bit hesitant about picking wild mushrooms and with good reason you never know unless you educate yourself as to whether or not you're going to have a reaction with a mushroom or if it's going to be toxic or there are a few different types that can cause hallucinations <laughs> and death which is not a good thing and so a lot of people do tend to avoid picking mushrooms Ooh, what's that over there? Let's have a closer look. Oh yeah, nice big stem. That looks like a porcini to me. Oh wow, it's already fallen over, it's so big. Now, this is mainly spore, but it's still good for flavor. Let me just cut the stem. Well, actually, it's cut there. It's cut there on the base. I don't see any blue, so I'm taking this one home. That one's for the bag. As I'm walking, I'm just scouring the hillside above me, not really looking below because it's just so much easier to look up and spot mushrooms. And I don't see any here, but this is a good method and I keep clambering up to have a closer look. There's another spot that is much further up that I have had quite a bit of luck in finding porcini. And so I will head there there are three main things that you need to look for when you're foraging for porcini mushrooms. First of all, if you see red on the mushroom at all, avoid it. Secondly, underneath the cap, there won't be gills. There will be a sponge-like material. And lastly, if there are, there's any kind of color staining, so if you cut the stem or you cut the mushroom in half, and it starts changing color, for example, to blue, probably avoid it as well. It could be a sign of toxicity and porcini definitely do not change color when cut. I think we've hit the jackpot. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's get closer. These are pretty good sized mushrooms here. But they've not gone over like the previous one has. See the big thick stem? Oh yes, 
That is one fine porcini. And there's a second one. I'm gonna get my knife out to cut this one. See the green spores, a sponge like texture underneath. That's very porcini like. I've spotted a perfect specimen down here. Oh, wow, look at this. This is like a dream porcini. Nice and big. Sitting free of any kind of dirt. I don't see any slug damage on it either. A lot of the times when you cut a porcini, there'll be maggots that have completely riddled the stem. But that is, aside from a little bit of damage in the cap, that is a really, really good mushroom. Honestly, I've never had a more productive porcini forage. And if you look closely in the background here, I spot at least three porcini of different sizes. The first one, is over here. You can see it here, the big thick stem. It looks like it's been nibbled quite a bit. I'm going to leave this. There's an older one just here. Very, very distinctive mushroom. I'll leave that here. We're not gonna pick that one. And then over here, just silhouetted against that darkness of the trees is a really beautiful one and I might take this one might not oh no it's not really the best condition I'll leave it here and there's another one just over there a really small one I've been trudging around looking I've seen a lot of different types of mushrooms but I've not seen any more of the porcini so I think I'm going to head home. I've got four decent sized porcini and I need to take them home, cut them up and begin drying them. And hopefully they're all for the most part intact and there aren't going to be too many maggots in them because it is an issue with porcini. It's the next day now and most of the porcini I've cleaned and some of it I've dried which is just over here. And drying means that I can put it into a closed container, like a mason jar, and then put it in the cupboard and it will last at least a year. And then to reuse it again, all I need to do is put some of the dried porcini mushrooms into a bowl with some hot water. It will reconstitute it and also create a nice yummy broth. And porcini, the king mushroom, has the most incredible mushroom flavor that you can get. It is just so mushroomy. So this is the best mushroom that I foraged yesterday. And when I say best, it's the least nibbled. And so I wanna show you how I'm gonna clean it. And also the moment of truth because porcini oftentimes get maggots inside them. And actually I can see a couple small ones on the top here. And this isn't for the squeamish. We just brush those off and I'm just going to do it in the sink just with a clean napkin, which is what I'm using, a cloth napkin or a dishcloth. You don't want to get the mushroom wet because it will just leach away some of the flavor and also just add to the drying time. So we just wipe this off and hopefully that is most of them, if not all of them, because I've put this porcini in the fridge and that often draws the maggots out. Insects love these too. And we just have to learn when we're growing our own food and foraging that sometimes we have to brush some of the critters away and make the most of it. So I'd say that that's looking pretty clean. The spongy material, these are tubes or pores underneath. It's getting quite soft, 
So I need to get this cut and dried very, very soon, which is right now. So let's see what this porcini holds for us. I'm just gonna cut it straight down the middle. That's pretty good. So we can see in here that it's nice and white and creamy. There is some maggot damage along the top. Not too bad though, that's to be expected. It's just one of those things with porcini, you just have to deal with it and it doesn't really affect the flavor at all. Most of the flavor is in the cap and especially in the white bit of the cap, but it's also in these tubes, these spongy areas. The stem itself, it doesn't have as much flavor, but it does have flavor too. So we're cutting that as well. And this is a decent sized mushroom, but still it's going to dehydrate down to a much smaller amount, which is good for storage. The, the texture changes a little bit as well, but a lot of people actually prefer the texture of mushrooms that have been dried first. So let's cut up the rest of this. Now you can cut mushrooms up however you'd like. Smaller ones, it's just so much easier to do just thin slices. We're just going to cut this into, I guess, quarter inch or smaller slices. And the stem as well. From one half of a porcini, we've got some really decent slices and you can tell that the mushroom's getting a little bit older because the spores here are larger and eventually as this mushroom would have matured out in the wild, the greener part would have actually started taking, taking over and there would be less and less of this white meaty bit at the top and this is where so much of the flavor and the texture is. I'm so glad that I found this one before it got any older. I have a tray of the porcini mushroom now and now all I'm going to do is put it onto the food dehydrator with these other slightly moist pieces. Put the lid on, it's on 30 Celsius, and then I'm just gonna pop it on for a few hours. And then check it every 30 minutes or so just to make sure that the food dehydrator is doing okay, that the pieces aren't already dry. And then once they are all dry, let them come to room temperature and then just store them in a jar and then they'll last until you need them throughout the winter to flavor all different types of things, mushroom soup, stir fry mixes, you can use this in, you can use it in risotto, anything that you would use mushrooms in. And oh my goodness, the flavor is incredible. If you've got any questions about porcini, about foraging for them, or anything else relating to mushrooms or even foraging in general, just let me know as a comment down below. And if I have the answer, I will be more than happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and for coming along with me on my wild food foray. And I'll see you next week here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.